We're going to take a look at correlation uh, using the correlation coefficient r and its uh, close friend r squared. First thing is talking about association versus correlation. Correlation means that you have a linear association or a linear pattern, uh, whereas just saying that you have an association means that the data forms a pattern of some kind. So some kind of mathematical pattern, whereas correlation focuses on the fact that it is in a straight line. So in this first pattern here, uh, you'll see that these dots clearly form a uh, distinct pattern, but it is not a line, meaning that they would have strong association in the shape of a parabola, but it would have weak correlation because it's hard to fit a uh, straight line to this data. If you try to fit a straight line to this data, it would probably look something like that. Uh, in this next one here, uh, we have a very clear pattern, and that clear pattern happens to be a line. So we have strong association and strong correlation. Sliding down here, uh, this graph does not have much of any kind of pattern of any shape, so you would uh, say that it has both weak association and weak correlation, because it doesn't form any pattern, and in particular it doesn't form a line. And this last one here, uh, definitely has a distinct pattern to it, uh, but it is not a very good uh, linear pattern. Now, you'll notice that compared to this first one where the line really did not fit, you can kind of fit a line to this graph. So even though it is a logarithmic uh, type of pattern, uh, you can sort of fit a line to it. So you might say it has a moderate correlation. Whenever you recognize something having some sort of logarithmic type of pattern, you're always going to want to uh, work with it in that way. So for example, if you're using uh, the website gapminder.org, uh, you can create graphs, and this would be an example of a graph that forms that logarithmic pattern, where the data is uh, shooting up and then kind of levels off and shoots across. Now, uh, in Gapminder, what you do is you have an option down here to change something from being linear to being logarithmic. And that means instead of adding a constant amount every single time, so in uh, this case, it looks like you go from 0 to 20,000 to 40 to 60 to 80 to 100. You're adding $20,000 of income at each level. You're going to instead, when you change it to logarithmic, make it so that you multiply by the same thing every time. So here, with a log scale, you're going uh, from 400 uh, to 800. You're going from 1,000 to 2,000 to 4,000 to 8,000. You'd go from 10,000 to 20,000 to 40,000 and so forth. And so you can keep doubling uh, in those increments. So each uh, equal space distance here is multiplying by let's say 2 instead of adding in this case like 20,000. So you can see that that makes this set of data form a much straighter line, a much clearer pattern uh, versus this one over here. It has a good pattern but it is not a line. It does not have good correlation. Let's look at correlation coefficients. The number is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. Let me just highlight those here. So you've got negative 1 is the lowest it gets, 1 is the highest it gets. Now negative 1 is a perfectly straight line with a negative slope, 1 is a perfectly straight line with a positive slope, and 0 means that there's no correlation. So the closer to 0 you get, the worse your pattern is. Now looking at all of these here, if we have these choices to pick from, uh, we're going to see uh, an upward trend in this bottom one here, upward trend in this bottom one here. So our positive ones, we have a 0.7 and a 0.9 are going to be between these two. And this one clearly forms a, a nice line, a nice linear pattern. So we're going to give that the correlation coefficient r of 0.9. This one here, definitely a linear pattern going on, but a lot more scattered. So uh, when you have something that's very clearly forming some sort of line but is kind of messy like that, 0.7 is probably in the right ballpark. On the negative side, we're going for the same type of thing. 
we're probably not going to see the, uh, real sets of data that are this straight of a line, so negative 0.9 would make sense. Negative meaning the slope is going down. Uh, we also have this one here, negative, the slope is going down, and the pattern seems to be that it's a little more spread out, so we're going to say a 0 0.7. That leaves us with a couple zeros. This one here, there's really not much going on for a pattern, so that one's pretty easy to convince us that R is zero. This one's a little trickier because it does form a perfectly straight line, but because it is horizontal, uh, going straight across, you could say that no matter what your X is, Y does not change. Y is always going to be the same value no matter what you have for X. So therefore there is no correlation, there is no relationship. X does not help you predict Y, so that's why it's going to be zero. Percent explained. This is where you take your R and you square it. So it doesn't matter if your slope is going down or going up because we're going to take whatever value we have and we're going to square it. So in this first example, R equals negative 0.9, you square that. R squared equals 0.1, uh, 0.81, and so that as a percent would be 81%. Now figuring out what that means, it means that whatever our X value is here explains 81% of the change in our Y value. So by knowing X, we can already predict 81% of uh, what's going to cause Y to be what it is. So something like an R squared of uh, 0.81 is incredibly high. That is an excellent model. It means that one variable very clearly predicts the other. When you start to get down into the 0.7s, still pretty good correlation here, it's going to, uh, that squaring is going to really reduce it quite a bit. So R squared equals only 0.49, uh, which means that you can predict about 49%. So roughly half of the change in Y could be predicted by X. Or if you think about an example, uh, years of education can predict half of what's going to cause your income. The other half of your income is probably caused by a variety of different factors, such as uh, what location you're living in, what your interests are, because that depends on what careers you go into, things of that nature. So as you drop to the from the 0.9 to the 0.7, you go from 80% all the way down to less than 50. Uh, continuing on, we have this uh, example from before. We have temperature and beach attendance, and we have uh, all of these data points. And if I were to plug these data points into StatKey, I click the Edit Data and I punch in all of this data into StatKey, I'm going to see that uh, it gives me quite a bit of useful information here on the right. It tells me the mean and standard deviation of each group separately, but generally that's, that's not something I'm going to use or need. Um, so the average temperature of all the temperatures I collected is 70. 5 for example, but that's not something that tells me anything about the relationship, so I usually will ignore those first two. My sample size of 7 tells me I have 7 points, but once we get down here we have the correlation, uh, the slope and the intercept. We'll talk about the other two later, but the correlation coefficient here, this 0.988, tells me how good of correlation I have, how good of a relationship, linear relationship I have. And so 0.98 is an excellent fit. You're not going to see data that linear almost ever. Um, now when we square that, our percent explained, we're up to 97.6%. So you square 0.988, you get 97.6%. And so what that means, if you're taking notes, the temperature, the x-axis, explains 97.6% of the variation in the number of people at the beach, and that's our y-axis here. So temperature explains 97.6% of the variation in the number of the people at the beach. Clarification of why we say of the variation is because these numbers are kind of all over the place. They're ziggy, ziggy, ziggy all over the place. And you can't predict necessarily exactly what it is. You can't predict 100% certain what things are going to be. Uh, but you, once you know the temperature, you can get pretty darn close with your guess, um, knowing no additional information. So that's why we say it explains that percent of the variation in the number of people.